Awesome, Tim. Thanks for uh, joining us here today. So uh, can you give us a little bit about what is uh, Ethereum uh, and, and, and kind of what is the London fork that actually just took place? Um, and just kind of give like a 30,000 foot view of uh, what that is for the audience. Sure. Um, so Ethereum has uh, basically network upgrades. Um, contrary to like different uh, coins, uh, we do hard forks kind of by design. Um, so when you hear say hard forks on, on Bitcoin or on, on Monero or stuff, they're usually very contentious. And it means that, you know, parts of the community are uh, disagreeing with each other pretty strongly and, um, and, and, and they go off their separate way and they create a fork. So when you've had say Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, you know, people disagreed about the block size and then people want the big block size just forked away from Bitcoin Cash. Um, and the reason they have to do that is because to introduce new features into blockchains, you basically need to have all the nodes on the network agree to those new features at the same time. And that's what's called a hard fork. Um, but on Ethereum, we've always had this, um, this, this philosophy of wanting to add a lot of features to the protocol. Um, so we, we, we have frequent hard forks and we've started calling them network upgrades because most of the time they're not really contentious, right? They're just, you know, adding new features to the protocol. Um, and so in August, we had another one of these uh, called London. Uh, we've been using DevCon city names uh, to, to name them. So that's why it's called London. And um, it introduced a lot of significant changes to Ethereum. It's probably the most significant uh, upgrade we've had since uh, the start of Ethereum. Um, the biggest of which is EIP-1559, and this is probably something that uh, people on the mining side are, are quite familiar with because it changed how uh, how, how uh, transaction fees were, were working on Ethereum. Um, but the upgrade also brought in a, a lot of other changes, um, like changing how basically gas costs for smart contracts work so that they're a bit more uh, healthy with regards to how much time uh, different operations take to execute on Ethereum. Um, and also laid kind of some groundwork for some future, future improvements uh, in the EVM itself. The EVM is the virtual machine on Ethereum, um, which actually runs all the applications on Ethereum. Um, so yeah, it was it was a pretty a pretty big upgrade uh, because it, it changed a lot of parts of the system. Um, it's went it, it's went really really well. So we've seen you know everybody upgrade. It's actually the first upgrade that I've been part of where nobody was stuck mining on the old chain where, you know, no miners kind of forgot to upgrade their nodes. Um, and yeah, we've seen like really good adoption of the different features that uh, were, um, yeah, that, that were proposed in, in, in the upgrade.